Well, as we've seen early on in, this, in our discussions together, the shortest distance between two points, if you want to find that, is the length of the straight line. And in fact, I can, I can sort of illustrate that for you right now. You know, if you take two points, one here and one here, this is the straight line distance between them. And in fact, if you want to try an interesting little virtual experiment, which is sort of fun to try, I mean, just take the two points as Lee's fingers here and look at the straight line distance. Can you visually see that straight line? If you just use your imagination, you can actually see it with your imagination. And look what happens as I move. Can you see the line changing? Gets shorter, gets longer. Virtual reality, folks, right here. If you're watching really carefully, you can see it. Sort of neat. Shortest distance, always a straight line. Or is it? Is the shortest distance always a straight line? It turns out that the answer actually is no. Shortest distance is not always a straight line. And you don't have to look too far for an example. In fact, you only have to look at our own world, which is the, which is the, the sphere. So in fact, here is a copy of, of the world right here. And you see, if you want to actually go from, let's say, Williamstown, Massachusetts, down to Sydney, Australia, say, well, the shortest distance actually would not be a straight line, but it actually would be this curved, this curved path over here. That curved path is actually part of a circle. It's the circle that goes through Sydney, Australia, Williamstown, Massachusetts, and whose center is the very center of the Earth. These are called great circles, or sometimes geodesics. And it turns out that um, you probably have already traveled along these things if you've ever taken a, a plane ride, because in fact, uh, pilots love to go on geodesics. These are the shortest paths, and they love fuel. So they want to conserve fuel as much as possible, and so they usually fly along the shortest distance, which is this part of a great circle. And geometry of the sort, geometry where shortest distances aren't lines, but in fact circles or other things, are called non-Euclidean geometry, but who cares? The point is that shortest distance isn't always, isn't always a straight line. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, sure, okay, shortest distance isn't, isn't because this thing is curved. It's round, right? I know that's what you're saying. So what I'd like now is to get a volunteer from the studio audience. Let's see if I have, oh, I have a volunteer right here. Want, want, want to come up here? This is great. This is great. And, and what is your name, sir? My name is Jeffrey Dan. Jeffrey Dan. Yes, it is. I see. And what do people call you? Um, Jim. I see. Jim. Jim. And have we met before? Never. Well, actually, this is our technician here, folks, right here in the studios. And he's here to help us out. But we haven't rehearsed this at all. And this is all true. True. That's all true. OK, good. Now, did you, did you see that, by the way, that the shortest distance here is part of this uh, great circle? Yes, I did. Yes. And so, of course, but the circle's round, so it's not that interesting, right? True. Yeah. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that right now. OK. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so get rid of that. And instead, <laughs> live video, folks, right here, real video. Instead, what I did was I actually made something to show you and my video virtual student over there. And it's a, it's a room, actually. And let me show you this room. Move these things here. It's a room, and I want you to take a look at it, and I want you to take I want you to take a where you are. And it's a transparent room, so you can see inside of it. And you can see that on one side we have a um, a spider on one side here, and on the other side, I hope you can get this, we actually have a, a fly. So we have a fly on one side, and then the opposite wall right here, we have a spider. Now it turns out that the uh, the spider is uh, is hungry, you know, and wants to eat the fly. Okay, so the, the spider wants to get from, from where it's located to, to the fly. Now the spider, of course, can't fly himself, but can crawl on all the walls, can also uh, crawl, of course, on the floor, and can even cl crawl on the ceiling. So it can crawl everywhere, but just can't swing across, can't fly. Can't fly. And so the question is, and, and, and the fly is not going to move, by the way. The fly is not going to move. I glued the fly in myself. The fly is not moving, okay? So the spider wants to get from here to the fly. And the question is, what is the shortest path, what is the shortest distance that is required for the spider to get to the fly? Now, I'm going to give Jim here a chance to actually think about that for a second. For a second. He's thinking, the important thing here is that he makes a guess. And in mathematics, of course, that is the key thing. Not to be afraid to make guesses, take risks, and possibly make mistakes. Because if you make a mistake, you then discover that, in fact, the solution was more interesting than you first may have thought. So mistakes, of course, are really valuable. They lead to insight. Anyway, I was trying to stall a little bit there to give you a chance. Okay. Do, you have a, do you have a path that you'd like to share with the group? Yes. OK, why don't you show us? The path he of did righteousness. Theater, he did theater, by the way, when he was young. <laughs> the spider's going to crawl this way. OK. And then crawl this way. All right. 
and then crawl that way. Okay, now I wanna make sure that everyone can see that path, those of you who, who are watching out there. So, so um, Jim's idea is for the spider to come right up along the edge here, and then go across the diagonal. Now, of course, I like the diagonal because this is sort of a right triangle, and so the diagonal cutting distance, that's a really clever idea, I think, and then goes down and captures the, the, the fly. Okay, let's measure that and see what the distance actually is, okay? Okay. Okay, do you have a measuring thing? No. Okay, I happen to have one here, don't worry. Okay, okay so I have one right here. Here we go. So let's measure this, and we'll measure, measure um, here, um, spider to head of bug, and I'm, just to keep us on the up and up, I'll start here so you can read it off there. I'm going to start here at the fly here, right there, come across, okay, now when you go down, and why don't you read out exactly what you see there at the head of the spider. 22 inches. 22 inches, ladies and gentlemen, right here, 22 inches. Okay, well that's a great guess, that's a great guess, shortest distance. Jim was thinking was straight line. It it turns out actually that that there is a shorter path, yeah. but but great guess because of course what he was trying to do was minimize this. Now actually the the actual path is much more exotic than you may think. It turns out that the 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 spider at first has to walk a little bit on this wall and then walk on this wall and then walk down on this wall and then finally get to here. It's sort of a hard path. Let me see if I can actually illustrate it for you. The path looks something like this. Starts up here goes around, spirals around, sort of corkscrews in. You see, sort of corkscrews in like that. Can you see that path? Sort of an exotic path. Looks like this, sort of corkscrews in. Now yours was 22 inches. Let's measure this, this measure this, this uh, really is shorter or not. Yours was 22 inches. Let's measure this one. So again, I start here at the head of the fly, go up this sort of exotic spiral kind of thing. And what does that distance say there? Can you read that off? 27 inches. By the way, this is the former technician here. Why don't you read off what it really says there? 20 and a half inches. 20 and a half inches, folks. 20 and a half inches. We saved an entire inch and a half, at the very least, uh, by going along the shortest, the shortest pass. Now, now the interesting thing about, about Jim's, though, the thing I like about Jim's, is that his sort of minimized sidage, right? It just went along this thing, went along this one side here, and then came down. That was it. My path actually sort of maximizes sidage, right? It goes on almost every single side. In fact, it goes on all the sides but one. It goes on all the sides but one. And it turns out, though, that my box is a high-tech box. And it turns out that if you actually open my box up, which I can do, and if I do that, watch what happens when I open this box up. What do you see? You see, see, look at that. Shortest distance, straight line. So Jim's guess actually was a good guess. He was trying to get a straight line, and shortest distance is a straight line. So give him a hand. Wasn't that great? Give him a hand. Are you giving him a hand? There you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. And as a, as a consolation prize, a lovely consolation prize, I have to give to you the crab. So now you have a crab. Anyway, congratulations and thanks Thank for being you. here. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Anyway, shortest distance, not always a straight line, really interesting. And uh, let's go back to calculus and see where we are. Okay, bye for now.